All right, so what I've got is the project. And uh, as I said, you should set yourself up that you've got some data to work with, some comics. I'm just going to go in, save some comics. And again, it doesn't have to be real data. Just put something quick for the moment. So I have some data to look at here on my table. Again, we're going to do uh, we're going to add CSS eventually so that the table is nicer. Uh, the table is going to automatically expand to fill uh, the screen. Right now, it's only as big enough as what the data is inside of it. Since I've got data, since I've got titles with a with a small name, the table itself looks small. So we're going to set it up so that it will automatically fill up the screen. That'll look nicer, and then uh, the columns will be nicely spaced out and such. Uh, at this point, I'm able to click that info bubble, and then you get the pop-up where you see the full details uh, of the comic. Okay, we're going to set up delete, or actually we already did delete, and next we're going to do edit. That's what's coming up next. So the big idea with edit is there's all of these fields related to the comic. I would like to be able to edit any of them. If I misspell the name of the comic, or the year, or the publisher, or I want to change my note, uh, I want to change this up in a way that uh, it can be any of those fields that I want to edit. So the idea is we're going to click Edit, and another pop-up will happen with all of these fields editable. I make the changes, and then I save. Or if I click Edit, I say, well, never mind. I don't really need to change it. Then I can cancel. So we're going to need a pop-up uh, to edit. and. Um, the whole JavaScript to do it. So that's what we're about to do. I'm going to send out the sign in sheet with a pen. Make sure you get the sign in sheet. So we're going to set up edit. Uh, that requires that we create a, um, a, a screen via HTML where all of those fields will be editable. So let's go to our code index HTML. We need to create a new screen, a new pop-up screen. <coughs> index HTML. Let's open index HTML. Let's go all the way to the end of the code. At the end of our code, uh, we've got section pop view comics info, and then we've got section template. Um, we need to make a brand new uh, section, a brand new screen that's as simple-ish as that one. So instead of copying the template, which has a footer and a header and stuff we're going to remove, uh, I think it'll just be easier to copy the, the uh, view comics section and then paste it so that we can edit it a little bit for, so we can change it a little bit for edit comic. So let's copy our view comics section and then paste it right after itself to create an edit comic section. I'm copying lines 184 to 203. And then I'll paste it right after itself. So now we've got a brand new section, edit comics info. With an ID pop edit comics info. So I've just, uh, to save a little effort, I've copied the view comics section. Make sure to change the ID. 
Uh, it needs a header, it needs an article, it does not need a footer. Let's see here. Uh, we'll simply say edit in this H1. We're about to edit a comic. What's in the article? Uh, this whole this whole div that displayed the details of the comic plus those buttons we don't need. So we can delete this whole div. And instead, we're going to create a form. We're going to need an input form. The idea is I'm going to edit a comic. I'm going to change its name or its publisher or whatever. We will use a form for that. This needs an ID. Form, edit, comics, info. And we need to uh, recreate the uh, fields that we're going to edit. We're going to edit the name, um, number, year, publisher, notes. barcode we can start with those uh, these are the fields that I want uh, for the moment to be able to edit in the comic I misspelled the name I want to change the name well all of these need to be in the format of a of an input field so if you recall this we had a label Label. Each of these uh, has to have a label. Then the uh, for attribute. Then the input form. Yes, you can uh, pretty much copy uh, the form from the um, from the original creation of the comic. Oops. Now there's a shortcut here to wrap a HTML. There's a shortcut to wrap HT, uh, an HTML tag around a word. I have to look it up. It's like Control Shift H or something. So this might be a little tedious, but you need to wrap the label around each of these. that will appear on screen, therefore they're labels. These will have then input fields. <coughs> I'm going to put the input field below the label just for readability. Input type text. placeholder comic name for the number input type number placeholder uh, just some number for the year it's also of type number, some placeholder, <clears throat> P 
publisher is input type text. Notes is a little bit different. It's not an input field, it's a text area, which has a, a pair. Uh, input is self-contained. You can uh, close each one with a slash if you want or not. Uh, label, or the notes label, the notes field is a text area because it's more than one. It could be more than one sentence. text area placeholder barcode is an input of type text Even though it uh, could be numbers, um, having the input as text still works fine. Um, there's barcodes that could have numbers. There's barcodes that could have numbers and letters by setting them as type text. It should cover both. If we set it to only numbers, it might be a problem if the barcode also has actual letters or symbols. So the initial setup of the table is a lot of like um, sort of like busy work. Uh, we know that we need these fields and such, but the whole basic markup of it, you need the label, you need the input, then we need the attributes that link a label to an input, and the input needs the ID so, <coughs> so that we can use JavaScript to read or write the data into those fields. So to be complete, a label needs a for attribute. I'm going to call these something familiar in for input name. Edit. Actually, let me just check one thing. Are we calling these in in name? or in title. We were calling them in title. OK, we'll keep it consistent. So actually, in title edit. Internally, previously, we've used title. So input, title. This is an input for titles of the comic, edit one. Okay, this for is going to be used for this input, so that input needs a name that's the same as that, and an ID for JavaScript that's the same as that. So this should be familiar, even though we did it like maybe two months ago. Um, to the input field, we need um, the uh, name attribute, same as above in title edit and then we need the ID exactly the same for the next one label for in number edit input name in number edit ID in number edit then for the number, um, the year, in year edit, in year edit. So keeping it very, <coughs> very consistent. In number edit, that is used for this ID named in number edit. 
identified with in number edit. So three times the same value, but three different properties for name and ID, and then the next <coughs> one is year, label for in year edit, name in year edit, ID in year edit. Publisher along those same lines in publisher edit. And yes, you could do, you could save yourself some effort if you copied and pasted where we had the whole original save comic. Those fields were pretty much the same, although those were in. Those ones were called something else in title save or something. In title, they were just okay. The original ones were in title, in number, in year. But then now these are in title edit, in number edit, in year edit. So notes for in notes edit. Text area has a name and an ID the same. And barcode in barcode edit. Input has the name in barcode edit and an ID in barcode edit. button to submit or to cancel. We'll do that in just a moment. Okay, so uh, this is your standard input field. This is nothing special. We've done this before, just a lot of tedious writing. Um, so on most of these input fields, we have a clear button to <coughs> start over. We're misspelling. We want to start over, cancel perhaps. And then a submit button, a go button. So uh, we need to include those items. So still within the form, next line, we will add input. For um, let's do of type generic button input type button value is the text that will appear on screen here I've got it as cancel uh, we're about to edit a particular comic actually I want to cancel so uh, we've got a comic I want to cancel there's a button that will cancel. Well, when it's something is set to type of button, it has no inherent usage. Um, because the other kind of button that we want, input of type submit, has that usage, that purpose. Wherever, whenever the submit button is clicked, it should then process the form 
but input type button has like no built-in meaning. So we'll need to give that an ID so we can target it via the JavaScript. So we can latch onto it via the JavaScript. Edit comic cancel. It is a button when we're about to edit the comic, but actually we cancel. So once we give it this ID, we can write the JavaScript on click of this button, cancel editing the form. <clears throat> Whereas submit, we could do on submit, but there's also the built-in dot submit. Whenever the submit button, or um, if it were on a website pressing enter, um, whenever that form is submitted, it'll start to process the form with the default behavior of refreshing the screen, which we've had to deal with before, which eventually will be prevent default. So this whole section, its purpose is editing the comic. I have all of the fields of the comic book fully editable. Uh, they're going to, uh, you're going to be able, the user will be able to edit one or all of the fields if they want. They misspelled the title, it was the wrong number, it was the wrong year. They want to add or remove notes, they will be able to fully edit the comic. So that's the code there in HTML, and then we will write the JavaScript to make that work. Okay, while we're here in the HTML file, we might want to change something slightly in what we did uh, for the view comic. Uh, we had the button, if you go back up a little bit to line 199, uh, in the HTML, we've got uh, delete or edit a comic. We've set up delete, that works now. We're about to set up edit. So the idea is you press edit, <coughs> it will then pop up the view comics uh, it'll pop up the other screen here, the um, uh, edit comic screen. So we're going to press that to open this screen. Um, we've given it the name button edit comic. This will work fine if we use this ID as is. But in my notes I have here that it might make a little more sense uh, to change that ID to add on to it prep. Because again, when we, uh, when we previously we're doing some operations we, when we were going to show the comics um, we needed to prepare things a little bit we, we didn't just show it right away we needed to prepare the data so perhaps naming this in the in the in the edit button on line 199 as button edit comics prep might help 
So you can leave it as is or change it like me. Just be aware of that. Let's go back to index.js. Uh, we need to go edit our JavaScript now. We'll go to our section where where we started to create our PouchDB code, line uh, 235. This is where we've created our various objects regarding PouchDB. OK, well, we've had L button delete comic. Uh, after that, we'll set ourselves up to make that button active. for editing for preparation preparation of editing a comic dollar l btn comic prep is equal to that particular id Don't forget the pound sign. So this is the one I just renamed in the HTML. If you did not rename your button like me, that's where your error is going to happen. And if, uh, if you come and ask for help and that was what the error is, I'm going to be sad. Because I'm telling you, I just renamed that in the HTML, so you should rename it too. BTN edit comic prep in the HTML ID is set to that variable. We also have that um, that cancel button. Um, so V A R L B T N uh, this cancel button right here. L B T N <coughs> edit comic cancel. That is set to the ID button edit comma cancel. So there's going to be the JavaScript object of the cancel button. <coughs> Next is the JavaScript object of the submit, the edit. Actually, uh, no, the form, the whole form itself when you uh, click Submit. So this Submit button doesn't have an ID because basically we are expecting someone to click Submit in the form. So that's going to be $L form is equal to the ID of the form. Objects, we'll say objects for preparation uh, for editing a comic. All of these are related. Uh, you, you click that very first edit button, it's that one. Uh, you want to cancel the editing of the name of the comic and such, it's that one. You, <coughs> you've made changes and you want to submit the changes, it's this one. All three of these are related to this whole editing of a comic. We need to create the event listener. When a person clicks the edit comic button, run a function to start to prepare ourselves to 
edit the comic. A new window pops up. Never mind, I don't want to edit the comic. Cancel. Or yes, I do want to edit the comic. And you submit the form. So those all need those event listeners. Uh, let's go to the, to the end of the code of the JavaScript. And we'll We'll go to the end of the JavaScript, where we've got our block of pouch db event listeners, line 562. So LBTN edit comic prep on click. After clicking, we run function edit comic prep, which doesn't exist yet. <coughs> now, I'm going to add it here as a comment for the moment. The cancel. Uh, we want this code eventually. I'm writing it as a comment for the moment um, because if you, uh, we're going to write the event listeners right here and then we're going to define this function. And if we try to run our code, because then next we're trying to run another function upon a click of a different button, but it doesn't exist, we, would, we might get errors. So uh, I'm going to write the, that line as a comment and then we'll fill it in. We'll uncomment it and we'll complete it a little later. That one's going to be fn uh, edit um, comic cancel. So, question? Canel, cancel, yes, thank you. Okay, then also we want the, um, the submit, that one a as a comment, L um, form edit comics info, that one's okay. dot submit. We could have on click, but we have already the one built in submit. So we'll have that function, anonymous function, which we then are using to capture the default event. So we can do prevent default function form edit comic, comics info. This one I'm comment, commenting out for the moment as well. Uh, we, we're not quite there to get this working just yet, so if we were to save and run our code, we get errors. Uh, so it's commented out for the moment. Uh, that, uh, that form on the event of a submit run a function where we pass in the default event so that we could do prevent default so that the screen doesn't refresh. And that's the full syntax necessary there to capture the, that event. And these over here don't need, and that one there doesn't need any to capture the event or any parameters or anything, so we can just write it in that syntax, simpler. And then this is the one that's not commented because we'll, we're gonna work on this one for a moment. Then we'll uncomment these in just a bit.
So those three objects up there have the appropriate, those three up there have the appropriate event listeners. We're going to back up to where we've got our um, definitions, our function definitions, and we're going to create our edit comic prep function. So let's back up where the last function was at. Function delete comic. This is our function to prepare ourselves to edit a comic. us to edit a comic, to edit the comic in question. We'll have the usual that we, we have the console that tells us that this function is running. But I'm also going to say about to edit. We're going to edit uh, this. This whole idea is that we're about to edit a certain comic. Well, we've got our table of comics. We click the speech bubble. We've meant which particular comic to view. That particular one that we're looking at is the one we're going to edit. We're going to change. Well, we've used a system here where we know which comic we're going to delete. So we will use the same global scope variable to keep track of which comic we're about to edit. Now, we named it temp comic to delete. So it doesn't matter again what these things are called. This could be kitty cat. It would work just fine. We called it temp comic to delete. That's the global scope variable that we were using to keep track of which comic are we about to delete. We can reuse the same variable to know which comic we're going to edit. So yes, this is temp comic to delete, but we're not actually deleting. It's just the name we chose. We could have called it comic in question, or the comic, or, or whatever. The comic that we're using <coughs> to edit or to delete. Um, at this point, you can do a quick uh, save and run. Run it and try pressing the button. Try viewing a comic, clicking to edit a comic, and see if you get that output. If you don't get that, we need to fix it before we go on. But if you see that output, it is recognizing your clicks upon the edit button. Then we'll set ourselves up to edit the comic. I'm going to run this in my browser and see if I see that output. Okay, I'm going to clear my console, view comics. I'll click the first comic, get all of this other feedback that I've seen before. I click the edit button, get the pop up right there, or the, the feedback function edit comics prep is running. About to edit, and the comic that I had clicked on was AA. So if I had clicked on a different, I'm going to click on that comic CCC, I click on that one, I click edit, and the console says it's running about to edit CCC 1998. So if it shows that at least, if it shows those line numbers in question and, and uh, the output that we just created, you're on the right track.
What needs to happen in this function to prepare is we need to check in the database what are the different fields of this comic, which are title, year, publisher, all of that. We need to read what those are so that the user can then change them if they want. Remember that in the index HTML, we have a form which would display the name of the comic, the number of the comic, the year, and all of that. Well, these fields at the moment are empty. We want to populate the name field, the number field, etc., with the comic in question. So we're going to fill these input fields with the current values the misspelled name, the wrong number, the, the empty notes, whatever. We want to fill in this form that we created today based on the comic in question. That's what we're preparing. We're going to fill in all those fields. Then the person can choose to change those fields and click Submit, and then they'll change in the database. So we'll say, get the data. Let's say, look, we'll get the fields of the comic selected and populate the form so the user can change any or all of them. Okay, so db.get temp comic to delete. Temp comic to delete is what is storing the comic in question. So from the database, let's try to get all of the data of the comic in question. So that then we can eventually put it into that form. As usual, we've got failure and success, failure or success, trying to get, trying to do any pouch operation, any method, which I will then break apart, set up an if else. Set up an if-else to deal with the failure or the success. And we'll note to ourselves there was some error error getting this comic from pouch we can say what the error was so this is another example where we probably sh would never trigger this failure because there is a comic in the table. We click the info button. Then we're going to click edit. There is a comic that we're trying to edit, the one that I clicked the speech bubble on. So there really shouldn't be any time when then there's a failure to get that comic from the database. If we're able to click that speech bubble, it does check the data dash ID of a comic that exists. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't exist uh, if the comic, you know, it wouldn't be in the table if the comic didn't exist. So we should never trip failure. Uh, else, which is success, should always happen. Um, but that's why we test things just in case and try to see if we can find a way to break it. 
Okay, so we were saying yes, the comic exists. The point is, I want to then populate all of those fields in the form with the particular data of the comic. So we can use the jQuery selector to select those form fields in question, which we named uh, in title edit. We can then set the value or read the value. When we have dot val, we're saying let's read the value of the input field. In this case, we want to set the value. So if I put in right here whatever I want, in the, in the input field, it will write cats in that input field. Well, what I want to write in there is the, is the title of the comic, the one I'm, I'm about to change, perhaps. So the comic, all of the comic data is in success. When we try to get a comic from the database and, it's, and it succeeds, Pouch gives it back to us right there. All of the data in JSON format is right there as an object. So therefore, um, I want to write the title of the comic into the input field where I'm going to edit the title, success.title. I have the input field that we created in um, number edit. I want to set the value of that input field to success dot number. The number of the comic, put it into that input field. I actually meant I had number 78 not 77. So what's in the database, 77, will be put into that input field so that we can change it to 78. Or we have the year of the comic. So we have the input field in year edit. Set the value to what is currently in the database under the year field. Actually, that was from 1998, not 1968. So it's going to take what was in the database, this is what was currently in the database, put it into the input field so that then we can change it if necessary. And even if we never change it, if it's correct, well, we're, we're loading it anyway to show it on screen in case they want to change it. And you probably see here that for all of these input fields and all of the fields in the database, it's the same thing. We call it in publisher edit set the value to the success objects property publisher. We had notes. Which we need to set as success.notes. barcode this one actually at the moment is gonna probably cause an error or undefined or something because we don't actually we have not actually saved any barcode data <coughs> yet um, Remember, we're going to set it up that we're going to be able to take a photo of the comic and or the barcode. Uh, we have never saved any barcode data to the, to the um, database yet. So this will probably be undefined. That'll be normal uh, when we set up uh, scanning barcodes, then this will work. make a note here set the value of each of the edit input fields to what is currently in the database in pouch there are those input fields we're setting the values to what's currently in the database
the last, that was all to prepare. The last bit of, the last thing that we do then is, after we've prepared to edit the comic, pop up that second pop-up screen with all of these <coughs> fields filled in so that the person can then change and then save. So after our whole get before the end of the function, we need to make that pop-up field, or that pop-up screen appear. So this is what we had before about changing our screen. From the current screen, we're going to change the view. We're going to change from one screen to another. It's that brand new pop edit comics info. That's what we called it, right? Edit pop comics, plural. It's going to be a long line. Um, select in the current screen. The method will be that we will change from the current screen over to the edit comics. Oops. Twice? No, not twice. <coughs> Once. Uh, change over to the uh, edit comics screen, comma. View it as a dialogue, as a pop up screen. Comma. Curly braces. Its role is of a dialogue. Populating the fields, display the screen where we can edit those fields. We're doing the preparation in this function. Get the old values, put them into the input fields, show that screen then we'll be able to have the user change them, save them after the break. Uh, let me run mine and see if this is on track. Let's see how it should work. It should populate the fields. View comic, I'm gonna click I'm gonna pick the first comic AA, I click edit, get the pop-up. There's the name of the comic, the number that I typed before. I didn't write anything else over here. These, these won't really work yet. Uh, if you try to do submit, it'll log you out because, again, that's not, it's not ready yet. But if I were to click on CC and I'm about to edit comic CC, it should then pop up the edit section, pop edit comics info, and then it should fill these in, which then we'll be able to edit and save. Don't try to, uh, don't try to update yet. It won't quite work. Cancel doesn't work either. But let's say I had a real comic, so I Iron Man number one two three. So let's say I, I saved a comic. Oops, I made some mistakes. Uh, that's a misspelling there. So the idea is I'm going to click view the comics info edit the comics info and then I'm gonna fix these things they automatically fill in for me I'm gonna edit them then after the break we'll actually make update work but for the moment it's filling in all of the data from the database that may be wrong at this point so then we can fix it that was all of this prep that we did so let's pause here for the first break if it worked, you can take a break. If it didn't, we'll figure it out. It's 7.05. Take a break until um, 
715, and then we'll go on.